listen to the story Hark to the tale of the good night loving Cattle trail, a story of courage And Indian tricks beginning in 1866 This is cattle country in the great plains of West Texas Open to the blue northers of winter and the hot winds of summer the land has changed little since June 1866, when Charles Goodnight and Oliver Loving mingled their herds to begin the first cattle drive on what was to become the famous Goodnight Loving Cattle Trail. In following the old trail, one must first turn a page to the past. Here at the Panhandle Plains Historical Society Museum in Canyon, Texas, yesterday in old photographs and relics of the trail. Mr. J. Evans Haley, famous author and authority on Charles Goodnight, uses a Comanche arrow to point out the path of the Goodnight-loving trail. It began at Fort Belknap, passed near the sites of Abilene and San Angelo, en route to Horsehead Crossing on the Pecos River. From there, the trail headed north into New Mexico through what is now the town of Loving, near Carlsbad. Then up past the site of Roswell to Fort Sumner, where the cattle were sold to the government to feed the starving Indians rounded up by Kit Carson. A Texas steer was worth $5 Confederate money in Texas, but brought $40 in good old USA cash on the northern markets. But it was dangerous work. Imagine these ferocious beasts in a wild stampede to be controlled by only a few men on horseback. This is Charles Goodnight's saddle, but when he was nine years old, he rode bareback from Illinois to Texas, hunted with Cato Indians at 13, launched into the cattle business at 20, and at 30, about the time this photograph was made, he was blazing cattle trails 2,000 miles long. Museum director Dr. Boone McClure shows Goodnight's guns which were designed to shoot the same caliber bullets. Pioneer cattleman Oliver Loving was Goodnight's partner. This is when he was a young man. When he joined Goodnight, he was 54 years old, hardy as a steer. They joined forces for a roundup about where Possum Kingdom Lake is today. Roundups have changed very little in a hundred years. Here at the big Wagner Ranch in Vernon, Goodnight and Loving would be completely at home. The cowboys select their mounts with care, choosing certain horses for specific jobs. Roping and branding and all the work of a roundup require specialized skills. A cowboy is as good as his horse, and the horse is as good as the rider. They work together. Good night and loving could be here, searching for the calves born since the last roundup. In the day of the open range, it was a common courtesy to cut out another cattleman's stock from your herd. He did the same for you. Irons are heated differently today, but the branding process is unchanged. Branding singes the hair and the hide. It doesn't hurt the animal. The roundup is over. The game at the end of a working day was a pleasure seldom enjoyed once the cattle hit the trail. A hundred years have passed, but Goodnight and Loving could be playing cards here today with the cow hands and the cook, talking of the drive to begin, making plans for tomorrow. Today, Goodnight's trail is a highway, reaching endlessly into the distance, beckoning the motorist on and on. As the driver speeds along in his comfortable car, he discovers the country is not as flat as it looks. Where Indians appeared from nowhere, cars appear just as suddenly. A good driver makes it a point to stay alert, not to drive too far, too long, or too fast. He may be ambushed by speed and fatigue and lose more than his scalp. For example, this sleepy driver is risking his life and the lives of others. He should have stopped before nodding the first time not after he has nodded and nearly escaped death. 
driving too long without a break has dulled his brain so that he's in a state of fatigue intoxication. He may pass out suddenly and cut across a lane to strike another car head on. A sleepy driver, like a drunken driver, cannot control his car. Fatigue is a killer. It's treacherous. It sneaks up on a person. But this particular driver is lucky. Texas Department of Public Safety patrolmen are following him, observing. They signal him to stop. They talk to him to learn what the trouble is. Perhaps he's ill or drunk or under the influence of narcotics. Patrolmen are especially trained to recognize these things. After checking his driver's license, they advise him to walk around the car. The exercise and fresh air will help to wake him up. Patrolmen know all too well what accidents do to human bodies. Preventing these horrors is the most important part of a patrolman's job. But it's often hard to tell when a driver is sleepy until it's too late. A little self-protection goes a long way. The best method of avoiding fatigue is to stop and get out of the car at least every hundred miles. A roadside park is a fine place to stop and rest a bit. A good driver understands how alcohol acts as a depressant and increases the dangers of fatigue. And he stays with soft drinks en route. The road opens once more, heading north through New Mexico. The stretch of plain approaching Horsehead Crossing was called by Goodnight the graveyard of the cowman's hopes. Three days and nights without water, the cattle grazed and dying of thirst. And then the wind shifted, carrying the smell of water, and the cattle stampeded. An old timer approaches the area where the cattle came surging over the banks, falling headlong into the river. So many, they dammed the river and water flooded the banks. It took Goodnight and Loving two days to go round up the cattle. They lost 500 head in all. Some were mired in quicksand, some drowned, some lost in inaccessible places. A marker stands today where tens of thousands of cattle swam the river at Horsehead Crossing. Primitive races, Spanish explorers, Mexican salt haulers with their carts, pioneers, stagecoaches going to the gold fields of California, all crossed the treacherous Pecos at this easy ford where the banks were low and sloping. The Comanches swooped through here on the way to Big Bend for raids on Mexican settlements south of the Rio Grande. Dim against the horizon is Castle Gap, through which the old trail passed, a favorite spot for Indian ambush. By 1867, word of the success of Goodnight's Drive spread, and soon other cattlemen were using the trail. The Indians swarmed down and became a constant problem. Here, at what is now the town of Loving, the historic Indian fight took place during one of Goodnight's drives. Loving wanted to go on ahead of the cattle and see about some government contracts. So Goodnight sent him along here with one-armed Bill Wilson. They promised to travel only at night, but they were both the reckless type. They didn't keep their promise. They rode through here in full daylight where they could be seen clearly for miles. The Indians spotted them and rode to the attack. Wilson and Loving galloped toward the Pecos to take cover. With the Indians closing behind them, they made it to the river, where the banks were steep and offered cover. They plunged over the bank and found a ditch where they could defend themselves. They crouched and got ready. The Indians swam the river and surrounded them. There were several hundred in all, but the first one who tried to get a bead on them from across the river was shot, so no one else tried it. 
the Comanches shot arrows high into the air to make them fall at a sharp angle into the ditch. They threw rocks, they shot guns, and a bullet tore through Loving's wrist and into his side. As night came, he grew weak and feverish from loss of blood. With extraordinary cunning and courage, Wilson escaped during the night to go for help. But Loving stayed on for two more days and nights, racked with pain and hunger, fighting the Indians alone. The fourth night, he too escaped under fantastic odds. Wilson found Goodnight, who rushed to his partner's aid and found the rocks and bloody ditch, but no Loving. Heavy with grief, Believing his partner dead, Goodnight pushed on to Fort Sumner. Old buildings gazed with empty eyes where he passed. When he arrived at the fort, he was overjoyed to find Loving waiting for him. But Gang Green had set in from the wound. And on September 25, 1867, Oliver Loving died. In a casket covered with flattened oil cans, he was carried over the trail he helped to make and buried here in Weatherford, Texas. Here, the pioneer sleeps, but the pioneering spirit never dies. After Loving's death, Charles Goodnight went to Paladora Canyon near Amarillo in the Texas Panhandle and founded his famous Old Home Ranch. Countless adventurers follow his trail to the beautiful canyon he loves so well. Today, Palador Canyon State Park is one of the great tourist attractions in Texas. Charles Goodnight drove thousands of cattle down a twisting, narrow trail to the canyon floor, where fresh water flowed and the grass was like a green sea. Eventually, Goodnight dominated nearly 20 million acres of range and became an international authority on the economics of the range industry. He died in his 90s at Saddle Up Time on December 12, 1929. But his courage and fiery spirit still linger to inspire the adventurer on the Goodnight Loving Trail. Listen to the story, hark to the tale of brave men riding on a cattle trail. The Texas Department of Public Safety in Austin, Colonel Homer Garrison, Jr., Director. Texans are proud of their state's wealth of historical points of interest which recall the days of the frontier. We travel these areas in our modern automobiles. We are reminded of the conversion from the horse to horsepower that has taken place. The vast majority of drivers today combine horse sense and skill, enjoy their travels, but we must remain alert for those who do not. 